Leaves start falling, come down is calling, loneliness starts sinking in. But I'm one, I am one. But Monterey was in that spirit. It was, let's do a Newport Jazz Festival, but it will be pop. We'll give all the money away, and a bunch of of uh, cool people in California, led by Derek Taylor, the Beatles publicist, and a uh, uh, couple of the guys in, in um, uh, uh, The Mamas and the Papas, uh, put up this festival and invited all kinds of people. And, and, and um, we were invited and and then I heard that, that G Jimmy was going to appear, and when we got there, we, 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 for some reason, hadn't taken our big Marshall amps. Uh, Jimmy had taken his. We, we, we hired some amplifiers over there. We were always doing things on the cheap. And, um, and then Derek told me, gave me the, 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 the running order. Uh, and it was that Jimmy went on before The Who. And I, I took Derek aside and I said, you know, this is wrong. And he said, what do you mean? And I said, you know, Jimi Hendrix is the, got to be the most profoundly um, important artist of this generation. And I was thinking in terms of, you know, kind of music hall variety, you know, the artist that closes the show is the most important. And I wanted Jimmy to be higher up the list. And he said, oh, it doesn't matter. And I said, you know, it does. I don't want, I don't think it would be appropriate for The Hood to follow Jimi Hendrix. You know, he should, he, he should be on after us. So, um, he said, well, let's come and talk to Jimmy. So we went in and Jimmy had just taken <laughs> some very, very powerful LSD. <laughs> and he was standing on a chair. He'd got a little amplifier, and he was standing on a chair, and he was playing, you know, and he was such an amazing player. You know, if you saw Jimi Hendrix perform, you'll know what I mean. If you didn't, well, y you know, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> that's not what you meant to say. No, yeah. it, I'm sorry, because you know, it, w it was something else. It's okay to hear the records, but God, this guy in the flesh was just something. F he was from another planet. He had the skills of a shaman. I've never quite understood how he did what he did. He seemed to be able to come alive and create light and color. Uh, I'd, I'd never, ever took LSD to go and watch Jimmy play. I was far, far, too, far too terrified just in my normal skin. And, um, but I always used to see stuff, you know. I, I, I think I'm, in tu I'm slightly psychic, there's no question about that, but just the most incredible performer, elegant, graceful, and beautiful. And then you'd meet him afterwards and he'd look like a dustman, a garbage man. He'd look like somebody that, you know, he'd look like a tramp. Seriously, he was very, he was very dirty and <laughs> not particularly nice looking. He had very, very bad skin. And, um, and his hair wasn't a proper afro. <laughs> it was just kind of... But you know, the reason why women went so crazy for him is that when he was on the stage, he looked like a god. As soon as he walked up there. And so he's up on this chair, he's looking at him and he looks like God because he's playing. And uh, Derek and I kind of, Jimmy, uh, we just wanted to talk to you about the running order. And he's going, what do you want to know? And, um, and, I, and I said, um, I'm a bit worried about going on, you know, after you. And he said, yeah, yeah, I would be. <laughs> 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 and I said, no, you don't understand. And he said, I think I understand. And, I, and, I, and, um, and at that moment, uh, the, the idea came up to toss a coin. And Jimmy agreed, and so we tossed a coin. And Jimmy made the call, cool heads, and he lost. So he had to go on after the who, because he lost. 
So we go on and we do our routine and uh, we smash our guitars and um, everybody's kind of fairly stunned. And then I go out and I sit with Mama Cass and Jimmy comes out and does roughly the same thing, but probably more elegantly. But anyway, he does roughly the same thing and she turns to me and she says, Pete, aren't you supposed to be the guy that smashes the guitars? And I said, it's everything I do everything I've done, everything that I am, everything that I could ever have come up with is his now. And, and that's kind of how it was. 